whenever I need some extra attention, I just put my tits on and uh, he's wrapped. Shredded! Welcome to the Shred the Mic podcast with Zeke and Kelly, everybody. Woo! Yeah, podcast episode number 13. <laughs> yeah, lucky number 13, baby. Yeah, it's a good thing. That's right. You know, I'm, I'm not like... I'm not like city streets. I'm not like hotels that believes in not using the number 13. Yeah. Episode number Euclid. <laughs> yeah. Episode no. number 14, because we don't do 13. Get mm. out of here. No, I want credit for this week. I'm yeah. proud of us. Exactly. 13th it's... episode? Yeah. What? So impressive. Yes. So impressive. Hey, what is the Shred the Mic podcast and how does it work? Oh, well, the Shred the Mic podcast is basically a quick open mic where we do five minutes each of brand new material that we are basically reading off the notes app in our phone. Um, and then we give each other feedback. And um, yeah, right? That's kind of... That's kind of the drill. Kind of the gist of it. Yeah, 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 that's it. You know, I'll try and perform it a little bit. I'm going to say, I'm going to live the lie that this is rehearsed and performed. Okay. Stand up, getting ready to be premiered for the first time. Okay, I'm just trying to set the bar low. I'm trying to set it so high. Okay, well... I'm moonshotting, baby. That's That's where we're... <laughs> We're going. This Zeke is rehearsed. Polished. I did not. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Either two, way, it'll be fun. Two very different approaches, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take a look at that silly hair, huh? Look at. Look at that. That looks fresh. It does. And I have my little little top piece up there just for you guys. Did you have home. a professional do that? I did. Looks like it. Maybe I'll do some material on it. It looks a bit better than when I do it. What? Give yourself some credit. Thank you. It looks it looks good when I do it, but it looks better. First first haircut, professional haircut <laughs> in two and a half years. Yeah. At least. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Anna for hooking it up. Yes. Taking care of those split ends, baby. All right, Kel, you ready? I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Feeling All right. shreddy. Got some ready, good shreddy. material for us. Yeah, we'll see. I got some material anyway. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Perfect. I love the confidence. All right, guys. Yes. Coming to the Shred the Mic stage, Kelly Shanley. Shred the Mic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to start you guys off with some cat humor. <laughs> so uh, our cat Remy is uh, 12. And I've noticed, like, I've had him for 10 years. As he's gotten older, his behavior has changed a little bit, like mostly for the good. You know, he's relaxed a little um, he's gotten more friendly. I feel like his version of slipping into senility is basically like becoming a dog. <laughs> you yep, know, like, yep. um, Zeke taught him a trick the other day. I guess you can't teach old dogs new tricks, but you can feed old cats new cheese. So yeah, he's very, he's very motivated by food, especially cheese. Um, he needs constant attention. Mm -hmm. He's the thirstiest cat I've ever had, like hands down. <laughs> Which, like, most of the time is adorable, except that when we leave town, we need to have someone come check on him daily. Not for food and water refills, but just for attention. We're like, can you just, like, watch a half hour of TV and just sit with him on the couch? Like, he is desperate for love. <laughs> uh, which is so adorable, but also kind of cancels out the main perk of having a cat over a dog, right? Like, they're supposed to be fine when you leave them alone. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's not. He's not. Also, uh, he spends a lot more time licking his asshole and barfing on the carpet and the furniture, which feels dog-like. But v um, Very dog-like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's sweet, so we'll keep him. Mm -hmm. I keep forgetting to do the mushrooms that my mom's boyfriend gave me. <laughs> that would sound really creepy if I was a child, right? But I'm not. I'm an adult. So it's fine. How did I get mushrooms from my mom's boyfriend? You may be wondering. Well, Jordan is his name. Jordan's awesome. We love Jordan. But um, so he's a musician and he found a guy on Craigslist to buy a guitar from. And when he showed up, the guy took a look at Jordan, who kind of looks like what Jesus would look like if he made it to his 60s. Um, <laughs> I mean, he is a Jew. I mean, like, he, he is, is Jewish. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the beard and the hair and like, you know, uh, but he took one look at Jordan and was like, also, uh, 
we just had a baby. So uh, I got to get rid of these mushrooms. Like, do you want them? I guess, you know, Jordan just had that vibe. So he scored mm-hmm. some free mushrooms when he bought a guitar. Uh, and because I'm a stoner, he was like, Kel, do you want some of these? And I was like, of course I do. But I keep forgetting I have them and I keep forgetting to do them. <laughs> so like someday you're going to hear us shut the mic on me doing mushrooms and Zeke babysitting me. Yeah, he said he would. I said I would. He yeah. said he would. I didn't volunteer him. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. I don't like bras. Um, I hate bras. I don't. If there's any way to not wear a bra, I won't. And so like when Zeke and I started dating, he was pretty much used to me just running around in like little tank tops. And, you know, they're small enough that I can get away with it. Right. But I didn't realize that I had fully faked him into thinking that I had really tiny boobs until... <laughs> I put on an actual underwire bra and he could not stop staring at my tits. Yeah. He was like, damn, where did those come from? And I was like, oh, I mean, they've been here, but you said you were a legs and butt guy. So, you know, just keeping it low key, letting them relax Mm -hmm. a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, basically, like whenever I need some extra attention, I just put my tits on and uh, he's wrapped. So. So true. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Okay, last bit. When um, my dad passed away when I was 27, I was obviously, you know, pretty bummed about it. And I lived with my best friend, Sarah, at the time. What up, Bergs? She was so great. Like, obviously, I cried to her a lot. And I talked to her a lot about Mm -hmm. it. And then at a certain point, I was like, "I I should see a therapist about this, you know? Like, I'm sure we'll still talk about my dad, but I'm gonna go ahead and outsource the processing of my grief to a professional so that we can remain friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad that I did because we're still best friends. Um, yeah. And she's how I met you. So, you know, apparently, apparently I was playing the long game. But, yeah, you uh, were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shredded. Thank you so much. That's my time. Five minutes of new material from Kelly Shanley, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Nice. Thank you. Uh, some good stuff there. Thank you. Some good stuff. Uh, <laughs> let's work backwards because that's how CTE works. It's so great. The smartest thing you ever could have done for your friendship, by the way, is outsourcing your grief. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, she was so great. Like, she didn't tell me I needed to do that. I just was like, this is too much. <laughs> I love that. So self aware. Yes. I wish more people did that. Take a look at your relationships, people. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Like, there's a reason why I have a therapist. I I have a sponsor for an anonymous 12-step program that I'm a part of. I have, like, a physical fitness coach. You know, you name it. I have things where I don't expect you or any of my best friends to do all of those things. So, like... Like, we still talk about them. Oh, yeah. It's not my job to fix fix you. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's not your job to fix me, you know? No, 100%. No. And we still Uh, like each other. I think that's why. I think that's why we still like each other. <laughs> what was uh, before, the, like, coming uh, up next? Bras. Bras. Me and my... Yeah, putting your tits on. You lull me into a sense of, like, <laughs> listen, boobs are nice. I, I dig boobs, you know? Oh. But, like, you know, I just... Uh, they're just not in my face every single day. So when you put them on, it just looks like, oh, hey, gets my attention. Yeah, he's like that cartoon wolf with, like, his eyes popping out of his head. I'm like, Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> clipping that out. That's that might be the the cold open right there. We'll see. <laughs> clipping that out for the podcast for the for social. Uh, yeah, no, I love it when you when you put your tits on. And it just kind of surprises me. Yeah. Um, uh, in the best way possible. <laughs> you yeah. know, they're like a, a sometimes treat. I guess. Yeah, they're a sometimes food. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> not not an everyday food. No, I love that. Uh, mushrooms from Jordan. Mushrooms from Jordan. Never thought about Jordan as Jesus. By the way. That is, that is really good. Thank and you. it totally makes sense. I mean, like, he's three feet taller than what Jesus would actually be. <laughs> I want to say Jesus would be probably about, like, four six by today's standards. Yeah. Yeah. 60s, long hair. Yeah. No, I totally see it. Yeah. I can't unsee it now. The... <laughs> Jordan, thank you for being such a good sport. <laughs> We love and appreciate you. Yeah, we just want to make it clear. We would not talk about Jordan this much if we didn't adore him. So. Yeah. 
We talked about him in the last episode, by we the way. Do. We yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. him a lot. Exactly. <laughs> Shout out to him for my body mass index joke, which I think is actually going to make it to the stage. <laughs> oh. Uh, sorry, before muscle index yeah. joke. Mm-hmm. And then Remy slipping yeah. into senility and becoming a dog. Yes. I feel like there's even more to that story. Uh, I feel like there's some details within the buying, you know, being a musician and just like having that look about him where yeah. like he fits the type of music that he plays. Yeah. You know, is very reminiscent of like the Laurel Canyon vibe from like the oh, late yeah. '60s in Los Angeles. Oh yeah. You know, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Where if you saw him, you'd be like, "Oh yeah." Like if I lied to you and was like, "Hey, Jordan played guitar in Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and Breslow," like you'd be like, "Yeah, okay, cool." Crosby, like Stills, Nash and Jordan. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Could, be. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. Could he be. needs a band name. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. No, he has a band name. <clears throat> Yeah, like he could totally fit in with that era of music. So it mm. does not surprise me at all that someone would have been like, you're into guitars, huh? You're probably into drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that it was like a new dad and he was probably so sad about selling his guitar and was probably like, what am I going to do with these mushrooms? And then Jordan walked in and was like, oh. Bingo. He'll take them. This guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, kids are probably out of the house. You know, he, he's he's cool, man. Yeah. So I love that that guy nailed Jordan's vibe. And uh, at the risk of profiling, he was pretty accurate. So I'm glad he was able to pass along the mushrooms onto you. And yeah. yes, uh, I will definitely babysit you as you have your first, you know, you. mushroom trip. You're so sweet. I hope to share the glory that is hallucinogens <laughs> with you as a sober person, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Remy is definitely Remy is definitely a uh, a dog cat as yeah. he, you know, slowly descends into senility, you know, but he is one thirsty ass boy. He is. And I think it's because like I've worked from home from a while and then I moved in with Zeke and Zeke works from home. We're both home all the time. Yeah. So when we're not home, he's so upset. <laughs> like We're gone for 45 minutes and he's like, you guys, what's happening Yeah, he. Oh, I forgot. He greets us at the door like a dog and then like rolls on the floor and shows us his belly. There's more to that bit. Mr. Uh, Zeke Chomas. Yeah, I got some stuff for you. Are you ready? Yes, I do. Are you ready to shred the mic today? I am ready to shred a mic. All right, let me get this timer going. Ladies and gentlemen. Shred the mic. Give it up. For Mr. Zeke Thomas. Thank you so much, everybody. So great to be here. Keep it going for your host, everybody. That's right. Kelly DeShanley. (laughs) Guys, update. Instead of jokes I'm not going to do, Kelly had this great idea for me to continue uh, to build off of jokes that I've mentioned in the past. Santa Monica Buy Nothing Group is going to be the weekly update that you guys are getting. And I am so sorry in advance for some of this, but here, I just want to give you an update again. You know, there are certain buy nothing groups out there that are awesome. You know, our friends who live in Playa Vista are giving away skateboards and unused like razor scooters and what else? Washing, Washing machines. machines and appliances. Yeah. Love that. Love the fact that they're sharing and donating locally. Well, <clears throat> here's what we're dealing with in a area that you think Santa Monica is pretty well to do on the west side of Los Angeles. I beg to differ. Here's what we got. This week, we have three things for you. We have half a bed frame guy. (laughs) I quote, half a Hollywood bed frame in excellent condition. The other half was lost in a move. Would love to find a home. How the fuck is it in excellent condition? (laughs) If it's half a bed frame. This is scrap metal, okay? This is not good condition. Mm. This needs to be off of the buy nothing group, (laughs) right? This is, of course, followed by item number two. Used panty and bra pad lady. Oh, my God. Quote, passing along some items, lace tank, two undies, one of which is Dior. Like, that's a fucking selling point. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) And, of course, bra inserts. All used items, by the way. Disgusting. Mm -mm. The problem was Mm -mm. someone actually commented that they were interested in this buy nothing group. So you know what? Y'all deserve each other. (laughs) You all deserve each other. And lastly, this is the update. You did not see this one today, I don't think. Unopened can of Vienna sausages. (laughs) 
decluttering kitchen and no one in my house is eating it. Just one? Full disclosure, date on bottom just passed. Oh. July 2022. So, oh. so let me get this straight. No one wants it in your own house. And it's expired? Might as well offer it to complete strangers. <laughs> Guys, as a reminder, if a food bank won't accept it, you probably shouldn't offer it to your fellow neighbors. Mm -hmm. Get it together. Mm -mm. All right, don't know if you saw that one today. I did not. Yeah, good, good. All right, <laughs> last week you mentioned how your mom is half a porn star, right? I did, that's right. She has a 70-year-old se se boob, and then she has like a, a... A new boob. A new boob, we'll call it, right? Like a four-year-old boob. <laughs> I refuse to call it that. Sorry, that, that came out wrong. It, anyway. That's uh, Kelly Shanley at Shred the Mic <laughs> for all your cancellation notices. <laughs> <laughs> well, it reminded me of how my mom got new boobs and how I discovered it. My mom ended up living with me um, when she got cancer, right? Mm -hmm. She ended up passing away. But for two and a half years, I was her primary caretaker as she was going through uh, colon cancer and like went through that entire journey. Well, when you live with someone who's sick, you obviously have to help them. You have right. to change their clothes and do all the things that go along with being a primary caretaker. Thank you. And at one point, I was just like, huh, mom's not wearing a lot of bras lately at 58 years old. Hmm. That's kind of weird. Hmm. I know how boobs work. That's kind of weird. All right, no worries. Haven't seen her in a while. Maybe, maybe, my, you know, and this was a period of time where I don't think I had seen my mom. She had lived, she had moved back to Brazil. I don't think I had seen her for like 10 years. And I was like, I don't remember your boobs being that perky. <laughs> right? So one day I'm changing her shirt and she just has like perfect boobs that are still up around her chin, much like your four-year-old boobs. Right? And I'm just like... <laughs> Okay, we have confirmation. Like, Brazil is land <laughs> of plastic surgery. Well, my mom couldn't help herself and got herself some new boobs <laughs> between the time I saw her and by the time oh, she returned man. to America. So listen, point of story is, God bless you. Like, do what makes you happy. Yeah. You know, uh, if you want new boobs at, like, in your 50s, go for it. Live your life. It was just a little surprising because she had not brought it up or referenced it and you know what? <laughs> Upon thinking about it, even before she she passed, zero mention of it. Mm. I don't think I would. I don't mm. think like on her deathbed, I was like, "Hey, mom, what's up with those tits?" Huh? <laughs> by the way, <laughs> by the way, before you go, uh, quick question. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, guys, that is my time. Thank you so much. All right, give it up for Zeke Thomas. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> Shredded. Hey, okay, you know, when in Brazil, right? Pretty much do went as in the Brazil. Brazilians do. Yeah, and uh, you know they uh, they definitely appreciate some some new boobs every now and they then. Do. Who doesn't? Yeah, yeah. That came out weird. I meant a four year old boob, <laughs> as in like <laughs> it, it, she's had it for four years, not like the boobs on a four year old. That was just don't cancel me. That was <laughs> you guys I, get it right? <laughs> no, that was great. Oh, uh, sorry. I, okay, my first thought. Let's see the uh, uh, buy nothing group. I love this. Uh, when you were talking about the the bed frame, first of all, I want you to reach out to this guy and ask if he's serious and just see what he says. Second of all, I wanted you to do a bit about like, when you call it scrap metal, I thought of Bubs on the wire. I was like, boom, the only person who would want this is Bubs on the wire. So he like, maybe it belongs in the Venice by nothing because that's the kind of people you find in Venice. <laughs> I don't know. Something there. But that could be a fun thing. I like it as a runner. And then you could say, like, what kind of person would actually want these things? You know, that's so good. I actually thought about referencing The Wire, but I had another bit <laughs> later on that I, if I had time, I was going to reference The Wire. Just because, obviously, as you can tell, guys, we are obsessed we've with been, The Wire. We've been binging it hard. Yeah. And, um, and it's so great. And Bubs is one of my favorite characters. I love Bubs so much. Yeah. And just... I had a line in there where I was like, if Bubs from The Wire looks at your post and is like, all right, <laughs> guess what? It doesn't belong in a buy nothing group, okay? No, it belongs yeah. in your alley. Exactly. Just, just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Yeah.
No, and the underwear. Like, sorry, if you're done with your underwear, it's because they're falling apart generally. Like if you're done with your own underwear, why would anybody want those? But Kel, what if it is brand name like Dior or Celine? I, I don't. I don't care. Calvin Klein? Don't care. No. No? Unless it's never been worn, I don't care. It could okay. be from Target. It could be Dior. If you've worn it, I don't want it. Okay? okay. Well, how about the bra pads? If you've worn it enough that you're done with it especially, I don't want it. Like, that's so unsanitary. You're not allowed to try on a bathing suit without underwear. Anyway, I'm sorry. Germaphobe. <laughs> no, and then the bra things... That's hilarious because it's like not like the cutlet things. It's like the little shitty round pads that come in your sports bra that you can take out. And every time you do laundry, they just fold over on themselves. And then you just have to either fix them every time or you just throw them away. Are you just trying to give these to somebody else? What are you What are you doing? Why? Why? Like, I don't know. I don't. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and the Vienna sausage again. Mm-hmm. Who who would want that? Who would volunteer for it? I want you to do a bit with each item of like who you could picture actually wanting that item. Could if be funny. Bubs from the wire yeah. might take some expired. You yeah. know, I don't even know if he would take expired food. And he's hooked <laughs> on fucking heroin. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh no, that's a fun that's a fun running bit. I like yeah. it. What was it? Your mom, your mom and her boob job. Her late in life boob job. Yeah. <laughs> so funny both of our moms got late in life boob jobs different both reasons. cancer related but different <laughs> wow this is a bummer of an episode <laughs> i would say it's uplifting ah uh, count it only partly for my mom though. yeah <laughs> uh, i hope my mom doesn't hate me for that um no she's a good sport too oh i had a thought what was it oh when you said see what oh how you discovered it sorry that's funny because it's like so sad but also so funny. Yeah. Uh, I would actually maybe save the reveal for that moment. Mm-hmm. For like how, don't tell us ahead of time that your mom got a boob job. Like, yeah. Tell us you were taking care of her. And then when you were helping her change her clothes, you were like, holy shit, my mom got a boob job. <laughs> and then the fact that you never mentioned it and she never mentioned it is like priceless. It's. It's funny. And uh, yeah, you that's could a do, good way to structure it. You yeah, could do yeah. like a deathbed joke there. You're yeah. Like, oh, before you go or, you know, I'm um, on um, before you go. I know. Like, one more thing <laughs> I've been dying to ask you, you know, like it's going to be. Oh, yes. Yeah, do you want to know family secrets? No, I want to know about your boob job. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no time for that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's dark, but I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> something there <laughs> there is yeah oh that is a that's a really good shred the mic right there kelly <laughs> yeah yeah nice job way to shred way to shred to you as well hey kelly how can people find you on the internet oh you know uh i'm on tiktok and instagram huh, not that instagram fucking matters anymore at kelly a shanley uh youtube is the best place to find me though at kelly shanley on youtube and um, on Medium, I've got a dating column and some funny pieces on there at Kelly Shanley as well. What awesome. about you, Zeke? I'm glad you asked, Kelly. How do I stalk you on the internet? You can find me here on this YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube. Of course, you can also find us here on Spotify mm-hmm. video if you guys are watching that way. Mm-hmm. Love having you guys. Like, comment, subscribe all those things help drive traffic. Let other people know that you are loving what you are listening slash watching to. Yes. But of course, if you want to follow me individually, you got youtube.com slash Zeke Thomas. And of course on TikTok, Instagram and Twitter, which I'm trying, I'm trying really hard guys to at least seed the clouds a little bit there. Zeke Thomas is rad. Of course, can't forget the Patreon, patreon.com slash Zeke Thomas is rad. Join my Patreon community for as little as $5 a month, have access to things as amazing as our behind the scenes setup of our podcast Ooh. or before we go on stage and at the higher tiers you have access to my functional bodybuilding programming you also have access to me personally and of course i even have the 500 hundred dollar a month tier which is insane so much access such a great value access to my non-existent only fans account <laughs> or not i don't know 
Shout out, of course, every single week, anyone <clears> who <throat> subscribes at the Johnny Utah level or above. So, of course, shout out to patrons Sophia L. Monroe and Jonathan Hamrick. <clears throat> Thank you guys for being continued subscribers uh, and contributors at the Johnny Utah level. All surfing, snow, and ski and sport related. Do yourself a favor, patreon.com slash Zeke Thomas is rad. I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, if you guys have any other uh, any other Zeke Thomas needs, you got ZekeThomas.com. You can also support us, Venmo, Cash App. That's in the show notes. Of course, you could also uh, buy merch. Last week featured Sarf Club. This week, Poseidon Performance Training. Shirts, sweatshirts, and all sorts of cool merchandise available via our show notes. Is that it? Am Basically, I missing anything? He's really hard to find on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I think we just shredded a mic. We did. I hope you guys join us next week for another episode of Shred the Mic. Woo! Shred the Mic is written, hosted, and produced by Zeke Rodriguez Thomas and Kelly Shanley. Audio engineering by Zeke Rodriguez Thomas for Mind Jam Media. And when in doubt, shred the mic. Thank you.